Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here, trying to get some of this ice off my table so we can talk a little bit here. It's time for the part three installment on my series on the Bear Creek Arsenal 450 Bushmaster Upper that I got. And I know I promised you guys we'd do some shooting. So this is gonna be a shooting video to catch people up. Part one was just kind of an unboxing video. Part two, we got it out, I got the scope zeroed and shot a group on camera just to see how well, how accurate it could shoot. <laughs> Actually shot sub MOA in that video at 100 yards, a three shot group. So uh, pretty impressed. These are budget minded uh, builds complete. This is a complete upper that I bought for you guys that are just finding this series. This is a complete upper that I bought on sale back around Black Friday, a uh, Christmas sale for $209. And that was the complete upper, including the bolt carrier group. Now I put the Redfield Revolution 3 by 9 by 40, 3 through 9 by 40 scope on it and the primary arms scope mount. But other than that, the entire upper is, is complete. I paid 209 bucks for it. So you can imagine, I didn't know what to expect as far as accuracy, but in part two, we saw that, that this, this pup will shoot. So since that video, I've built a dedicated lower for the upper. I know that I had stated that I didn't know if I was gonna build a dedicated lower or just swap the complete upper, the completely scoped upper in and out on my other AR-15. This is primarily a deer rifle for me. That's what it's gonna be for. So I didn't know if I just wanted to swap it out during hunting season and then just swap my 5.56 back on after hunting season. But in the end, I thought it would be best just to go ahead and put together a dedicated lower. I went with a Bushmaster branded lower receiver and it does have mostly Bushmaster Remington parts in it. It does have some other parts that I had laying around. It's got no, like, there's no high performance parts or a, a specialized trigger or anything like that in it, just your run of the mill parts kit. A2 stock, I like that with the scope set up. And I put that ergo grip on here. Really like the ergo grip. I actually did an entire video just on the ergo grip. You guys that saw that video got a sneak peek of what this rifle looks like now. That's kind of, well, I added these, since you guys saw it last, I added these flip up Butler Creek scope covers on the Redfield Revolution there. So, but that's pretty much all I've done to it since the last video. One thing I want to talk about today is the magazine. I know in part two, I was running the, it was a 10 round 5.56 magazine. It's an AR Stoner magazine and didn't have any problems with it. I did after the video was over, while I had everything set up, I shot a few more groups off camera. It's a lot of trouble getting the cameras set up so that you guys can see the target and me shooting. So I do a lot of my shooting off camera and did have a couple of fail to feeds on the last round. That 5.56 five, follower has got that hump on it where the 5.56 five, is double stacking these magazines. And that hump was pushing that big 450 Bushmaster cartridge kind of off to the side and it didn't want to feed. So what I did is I went ahead and got me a, a single stack follower and put in this magazine. So I think that'll take care of that feeding issue. And I also went ahead and cut a little notch out right here in the front of the magazine. I noticed that the cartridge, I never had it happen in the gun, but I noticed when I pushed the cartridge forward, the uh, lip of the brass would just catch right on that, right on the front of that magazine. So I went ahead and eliminated that possibility from happening. And I'll show you what I did here. Notice every now and then, it would hang up right there. Right on the edge. So I'm just gonna take the Dremel and just cut a little bit of that out.
This is the ammo that I've been shooting through it. This is the Hornady Black 250 grain FTX. I've shot 60 rounds through this rifle so far. That's it. This is not gonna be a rifle that I'm gonna shoot 2,000 rounds out of. It's just not gonna happen. It's, for me, this is primarily gonna be a hunting tool. So it's not gonna see nearly as many rounds as my 5.56. So I've got 60 rounds through it so far. Of course, ammo's not cheap for this. I do have my reloading dies in now. Haven't reloaded any yet, but since I'm gonna need some more brass, we're gonna go ahead and shoot this last box up today. This is a 20 round box. These run about 25 bucks. So they're over a dollar per round. But we're gonna go ahead and shoot this entire box today. That's what they look like. And we're gonna set up some different targets and just have some fun. We already know the rifle will group. Today we just wanna do some just uh, stand up. I'm not a big fan of bench rest shooting you guys that follow the channel know that i like to i like action shooting i like being up and moving around and and shooting that style of shooting but uh not not a big fan of the bench rest i do it because it is a a necessity when zeroing a rifle but after i'm zeroed i want to get up off that bench and do some real life shooting so today we're just going to have a little bit of fun with it we'll shoot some steel i've got some water jugs and uh, some other things we'll we'll go ahead and put some holes in Main thing I guess today is to test and see if these mods I made on this little magazine hold up. And if they do, I'll get me some more of these. I don't need, for my purposes for this rifle, this, this is a 10 round 5.56 magazine. It'll hold four of these 400, 450 Bushmaster cartridges. And for me, for my purposes, that's all I'm gonna need. Um, I don't mean that. I know somebody's gonna jump in here and say, Buffalo don't like high capacity magazines. I love high capacity magazines. I think everybody should get some. But just for this one rifle, for this purpose, I'm, just, I'm satisfied with this four round capacity. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, I've got my eyes on, got my ears in, got the magazine loaded up with four rounds. I've got that defense targets, RTS target set up at exactly 100 yards. I measured it off with my laser rangefinder here. Just wanna see if I can place some hits on it, but we already know the upper will shoot uh, from that last video, you saw that. I guess today, as we run through this box of ammo, I'm just wanting to find out if this magazine will run or not. So let's see if I can make a hit or two. Guess I better open those scope covers or I'm not gonna be able to hit anything. Hey, magazine worked good. It's a uh, first time around. So let's set something else up and run four more rounds through it. Look at that big fat cartridge. So now I've got four knockover targets set up and we are at 75 yards. Got the magazine loaded up. Let's see. If I can make some hits.
<laughs> All right, eight for eight. We got 12 more rounds left. Let's set something else up. It did lock back that time. I don't think it did the first time. Man, those 250 grain FTXs hit that steel hard. All right, how about a little hydrostatic display? Got four one gallon jugs of water set up. I didn't get to shoot all four rounds. Let's dig a hole. We'll dig a divot right there. <laughs> nice. Did lock back. That's good. Guys, it is nasty out here. Check that out. How wet my gun is. I'll have to give it a good cleaning when I get in. But I've got four of these little propane tanks. These little one pound tanks, they're, they're empty. But thought it'd be fun just to poke a hole in them. <laughs> did lock back again just that first time it didn't lock back after that it's worked fine the entry hole exit hole. Every one of these exit holes has a large exit hole the size of the bullet and then another little small hole beside it. Every single one of them. Not sure what caused that. Entry. Exit. Hit a little low on this one. Entry. Exit. Entry, exit. Be like Officer Greg over there on the Tau Flater Mouse channel. Stick my finger in there. <laughs> uh, that Tau Flater Mouse crew's a great bunch of guys, which they're over there in California. But if they ever do visit the United States, I'd like to meet those fellas. All right, guys, I've got a bucket of Easy Finish Ready Mix Joint Compound. That's a five gallon bucket and it is completely full. I was gonna take the lid off of it and show you guys, but it's frozen on. My fingers are numb. I just can't get it off of there. So I'll get it off there with this. How about that? We're gonna put three rounds into it. And what that is, that's just uh, mud like you would finish drywall with. And it is a full bucket. Wow! <laughs> Gosh! Check that out, look! Woo -hoo -hoo. That's mud right there. That's what was in the bucket.
All right, so that wouldn't nothing little water wouldn't take off. For those of you that's been counting, that made 19 rounds. We got one more round left in that box. I've decided to line up some jugs of water here and try to catch one of those 250 grain FTX bullets if I can. I've got eight jugs there. If I line everything up perfect, maybe we can catch that bullet. So that'll be our final shot of the day. This weather has just uh, it's deteriorated uh, to the point I'm ready to get inside anyway, to be honest with you. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> I think I've done it. All right, let's see what we've got. Now that last segment, I just realized my microphone wasn't on. Hopefully the GoPro on that little, uh, the audio on that little GoPro worked. Sometimes it does pretty good and sometimes it doesn't, but we'll have to live with it. So we had eight jugs here. It just cut the first one plum, plum. There's one of those redneck words. Cut the first one plum in half. Second one. I don't know if this, which one was the third and fourth there. Fifth, through and through. Jug number six has our bullet. How about that? The jacket did come off in the jug, but it made it all the way to the sixth jug with it. That's pretty good. Anytime you want to catch a beautiful looking bullet, expanded bullet, water is the best way to do that. Water is not representative, of course, of people like to use the ballistics gel and stuff to represent tissue and things like that. but. Water will just give you those beautifully expanded bullets almost every time. All right, guys, so I'm going to call it quits for today. That's all the ammo I had anyway. Worked out pretty good. You know, only having that, only having that one box of ammo and 20 rounds, a lot of things could have went wrong in today's video, but other than the weather messing everything up, it actually went pretty well. A little magazine uh, seems to work well. What I'm going to do is get some more of these. It's, it's the AR Stoner. You know what's weird about that? That AR Stoner mag that I bought that was designed for the 450 Bushmaster would not run. Just wouldn't run for a quarter. But I took this one that was designed for the 556, put a single stack follower in it, and cut that little notch out. Works perfect. So. I'm gonna stock up on a few more of these. I don't need very many. Like I said earlier, this is just a hunting rifle, not something I'm gonna be putting thousands of rounds through, but I like the way that's working out. Uh, like the entire rifle, the, the, the BCA upper is just, a, it's amazing for the price. Don't really know how they do it, but heck, I even found all my brass today. So I haven't started reloading for this yet but I will be. Got all 20 rounds of my brass there. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. But that's all I got. And I'll talk with y'all again soon.